Hey everyone, so before we get started, I have a quick story to tell you. Okay, so this video has been a journey to make. All right, so the first night I try to do this, I'm all ready, my makeup is on, the lights go out, and they stay out for a good two hours, and I just gave up and decided, okay, I'll do it the next day. You guys, I'm so mad right now. I was about to start filming, I just finished my mug, and the lights go out. What am I supposed to do now? Ah! <sighs> The next day, I filmed the entire video, and when I uploaded it to my computer to start editing it, I realized my microphone's audio did not pick up. <laughs> Thankfully, I have the room audio for my other camera, so the audio will sound a bit like I recorded it in my bathroom, which, for all you know, I could have. So, enjoy the video anyway. On to the video. Hi, everyone. Jane Spantle here bringing you yet another video. Oh, my God, you guys. It has been a minute since I felt it. It's been like a whole week. Oh, my God. I've been so bad, you guys. I've been taking a lot of time to myself since, you know, we're in lockdown and I can do that now. Oh, my gosh. But I'm back with another video. So, here we go. I haven't done a subscriber submitted wig in some time now. So, I'm a little backed up on them. So, bear with me here. That was okay? the last video. Oh, was it? Well, that was like a whole week ago, okay? So, this is gonna be a brand new subscriber submitted wig. Oh my God, I don't even know my own content anymore. What's live? Who am I? <laughs> Anyways, I'm gonna go through a box that someone sent me to my P.O. box. Box, box, box. And I'm gonna show off what's inside the contents of the big brown box. Now, this was submitted to me by a subscriber and friend of the channel, Katrina Klein. Let's see, pull this out. She sent me a wig. That is inside of a glass, a plexiglass container. I've never seen that before. That's interesting. Why don't they do that anymore with wigs? That's fun. It's kind of crap, but it's probably because it's old. Oh, God. What's this? Dog of a wig she sent me. Okay. What are you? She sent me a fierce fashion mullet. Yes, yes, yes. This is a mullet wig from... Ooh, Renee of Paris. Okay, fancy. It's a top drawer 80s mullet wig. Let's put it that way. Okay, top shelf 80s mullet. What else? Great. All right, what else is in here? She sent me, what the hell is this? Belle Vermeer. Oh, they're pantyhose. Vintage pantyhose. That's fun. I haven't seen these in forever. I what they look like. Look how fancy pantyhose used to come. Oh, my God. Tissue wrapped pantyhose. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Look who shops at Fredericks of Hollywood. Oh my goodness. Women used to buy their pantyhose like that? That is bulky and inconvenient, but okay. I love that. Okay. They truly lived a better life than we did. Here we go. All right. I have Beatrice Fairfax. True stories from real life. Problems of love, courtship, and marriage by America's favorite expert in her own magazine. Oh, Dear Beatrix. That's, let's see what the inside of that looks like. It's a vintage magazine? It looks like a comic book. Oh my god. <laughs> this is a, oh, it is a comic. Okay, that's fun. I want to show too much because I don't know if this thing's still in print or not. Judging from it, it probably isn't, but you never know. That's fun. I wonder if it's like Millie the Model or one of those old like Marvel comics for little girls. Look at that advertisement. $9.98 for that whole set. Yeah, this is definitely the 50s. Yeah, and there's an advertisement for a panty girdle on the back of a child's comic book. Gotta love that. What else is in here? She sent me a lot of gifts. Oh, my God. She sent me some makeup. Smooth Barons. Flossy Glossy. That's cute. What else is this? Eyelashes. Thank you. What is in here? Oh, I have a letter. Let's see. I'll put that down and I'll read that in a second. Oh, she sent me a Barbie. That's fun. Her shoes. Oh, these friggin' mules from the 1950s always snap. Never put them on your dolls. Horrible. But they're so cute. Oh, the little hat clothes. This is really kind. Thank you. A telephone. Okay. This is cute. I love this. This is a vintage bubble cut from the 1960s. And you can tell she's vintage because she's bow-legged. That's how you know. The, the vinyl, it stretches after time. The Barbies come bow-legged. Let's read the nice little letter she gave me. Let's see. Dear James Mansfield, Hi, and close are a few thank you gifts for all the beautiful wigs I've purchased. They are really fantastic. I'm sending you a challenge as well. 
drag her dragstery dragstery okay it is in the original box i bought it in 1987 from a wig shop renee of paris a frosted beauty called wild cat she was worn all over the eastern seaboard and the midwest and even debuted in milan italy in 1992 they thought i was a prostitute so i decided maybe my look needed an update she is now yours ready to rehab the hair gods thank you Thank you again for your many videos, social media, and the YouTube entertainment. Your talents are greatly appreciated during this dark time. We watch every Saturday morning after waffles and bacon. Kisses, Daryl and James, AKA Katrina Klein and the Mister. Oh, that's so sweet. Thank you, Katrina. That is too, too sweet. All right, now let me clean this up a little bit and I'll be right back and we'll take a closer look at this <laughs> wig. All right, this is the hair and <laughs> okay. She is serving you a fierce, frosty, the 80s aren't quite over, 1990s mullet. <laughs> My mother has a friend named Lisa who has this hairstyle to this day. <laughs> That's what I look like. <laughs> Literally an unironic mullet, which is, I love it. Oh my God. I have to say, like, you know, I feel like Brian Pillman in this hair. This is fabulous, but we're going to take this off and we're going to transform it. Let's see what we can do. I'll be right back. <laughs> All right, I am back. Now, this is our wig. She is definitely a mullet. Let's take a closer look at this, okay? And take her off the head and show you. Now, the remarkable thing about Renee of Paris wigs is that they are still around. They're the same quality of like, you know, a Raquel Welch or like a Jean Renault. Those kind of like high-end wigs you could get in like the 90s and 80s. They have like the caps like that, lots and lots of tracks, and permatease was a huge thing on these wigs. Almost all of them have a permatease that they come from the 80s or 90s. All right, now let's start styling this hair. Okay, so there's already sort of a permatease in it. So honestly, what I really have to do now is just take out any kind of kinks that are in the bottoms of the hair. Yes, at the ends. And then we can go through and see what we can create with this. Because with a mullet, you're kind of strapped for options as what hairstyles you can do. This hair color and this haircut is screaming like, you know, television movie of the week, like lifetime original movie hair for the 1980s. It's serving you like my mother's secret life or um, any kind of movie starring Lonnie Anderson or Farrah Fawcett. And I have to say for this wig being from 1987, she's in pretty decent shape. So hats off to you, Katrina. You take care of your stuff. I wish I had some hairs that were that good. All right. Okay, I'm just flicking it and seeing how it's feathering. It's already cracking me up. <laughs> okay, well, oh yeah, she is definitely giving you some TJ hooker or, you know, just hooker, depending on, you know, who's wearing it. All right, let's go through and see what we can do with this. Take my teasing comb and let's see where we even can get with teasing with this because the hair up top is really, really short. So just from looking at it, I might have to do a butch with it because there's not a whole lot you really can get out of it besides the hairstyle it was given. But we'll see. Now, I like to think that I can get a hairstyle off just about any wig. And from what I've read, this wig made its debut in Milan, Italy in 1992. That's the first time she wore it. I take a little umbrage knowing that a wig has had a more illustrious career than I have. That's beside the point, okay? This wig has lived more lives than I have had in my 30 years on this planet. I'd say it is a nice wig though, like for a Renee of Paris wig. That's some good quality as far as being from the 80s. I've been very, very impressed with seeing these old wigs, especially the ones that come from like the 80s and 90s. Like they didn't mess around when it came to making wigs. They made these things to last. And even like, you can barely see like the tracks peek through in the back. Like the permatease is really, really good. Like you have to really get up in there. I guess it's for those ladies that were self-conscious about the fact that they're wearing, you know, phony hair. They had to make it look as natural as possible. And back in them days, everyone was frying and dying and laying the side of their hair anyway. So no one was gonna notice if a hair looked a little too over-processed because everybody's hair looked like it was a wig. Yeah, the more I play around with it, the more I realize she ain't leaving the 80s, okay? Like, she's gonna be either 80s or 90s no matter what. So, 
You're just going to have to find a comfortable middle ground here because you're not going to get anything modern out of this haircut. <laughs> yeah, I'm thinking I might just cut the mullet out of her and that might be what saves this wig. It's maybe time we take her out of 1987 and bring her at least in 1994. So let me just grab my scissors and we're going to do a haircut on her. Yeah, that's what we're going to do. The hair back here, I'm going to trim it so it matches the hair right here. So I'm going to take it from about here to about here. Now it's still an 80s haircut, but I can work a little bit more with this because that mullet, you could not escape it. She's gonna be serving some form of Sally Field if I like put it all together and make her neat. But we'll see, let's see what we can do here. All right, I'm gonna root out the hairline some. Yeah, I was taking a look at the Renee of Paris website and these wigs are still super expensive to this day. Like I'm curious how much they would have paid for this in 1987. Because nowadays, they're still about $150 a pop, and that's for a hard front wig. Like, they're along the same price ranges of, like, your Raquel Welch kind of wigs, where you're paying for that luxury brand name. And something that's been around for, you know, 30 years or whatever. One thing I learned is, like, there's really no going back from a mullet. You either have a mullet or you don't. So... We're gonna take the party out the back and try and bring more of it to the front. More of a business hairstyle because she's an older lady. She can't be committed to that Billy Ray Cyrus mullet forever. Just, you know, come of age and be with times or at least a time closer to ours than 1987. So, here we go. Let's start with the back. I also can't get over how well made this friggin' wig is. Like, if you get a chance to buy a vintage wig, go for it, girl. You're not going to be disappointed. Just, you know, good luck finding a good hairstyle that's not a mullet. Like, the most I could ever find for vintage hairstyles from wigs are, like, really, really shortly cropped wigs that you can't do anything with, like pixie cuts and stuff, or mullets. That's all that's available anymore. All the good ones have been scooped up. It's like when I was trying to find stuff for that Dolly Parton collection. I could only find one that was mid-length at best because those collectors were nuts. They bought all those wigs up. You aren't going to find any of them. And if you want them, you're paying top dollar for them because they're collector's items. Which is a trip because I looked at the catalog for Dolly Parton's wigs and those things were expensive. They're along the same lines as like a Renee of Paris wig. And like looking at it, I could see why. Like it was really well made, but Jesus Christ, they're talking like a couple hundred dollars for one wig. Oh my God, random side note, my boob is giving you Squidward today. Oh my God. <laughs> Get in there. All right, I went through and I teased down everything. Every single part of this wig, I teased down. And now I'm just using my pick and I'm just packing down the volume because I decided I'm going to be inspired by the Barbie doll Katrina gave me and we're going to give her a bubble cut. Yes, yes, yes. I saw a couple of you ask me how to do a bubble cut wig from me wearing them a couple videos ago. So I'll show you. Now it's really, really easy. All it is is just teasing and packing and making sure your packing is like solid down to the head. Like it, it literally is the name of it, a bubble. So it's bubble teasing all over like you're creating a helmet. And what creates the hairstyle is the tendrils that hang over. And it's usually like a couple inches, depending on how big you want it to be. If you want your bubble cut bigger, you need longer hair. But since this is a shorter wig, it's going to be with a small bubble cut, more compact. But you want it to look like that, where it's matting down. But it doesn't need to be like, you know, solid matting. It's loose matting. You know, a soft little football helmet bubble. And you want to still have tendrils hanging down because that's what's going to create the shape of the bubble cut. Otherwise, it will just be looking at a bunch of pack teasing. And now from there, take our pick and flick. And you do it in little sections at a time. I usually start from the middle and work my way down to the bottom and then do the top last. That's just my own process. Some people do the top first. This is just the way I do that. Now, I don't know what it is. I think it's just me getting older. But the more older I got, the more I appreciated the bubble cut Barbie. When I was a little kid, I never really liked them because I just didn't like short hair. But now that I'm getting a little older, I love it. I think it's so chic. I think it's just a thing that comes with age. You learn to appreciate short hairstyles more and more. Because like they are so effortless and so glamorous in some cases. 80s and 60s hairstyles kind of can be blended together really easily from each other because most of them all like you know rely on curling and teasing and certain ways you brush out the hair. And a lot of them kind of borrow traits from each other. Like you look at certain hairstyles from the 80s, they are like callbacks to stuff from the 60s. They're just, you know, 
brought to that era and made to the extreme. Now, if I wanted to be more 80s in front, you have thinner bangs, more of an eagle claw. If you want more 60s, you make the bang a little thicker. And just like that, you get a dense 60s style bang. And the other parts of the hair is just meant to garnish and basically create a do. If you want like Barbies, it can flick forward like that and go under. And what I like about this is it's one of those hairstyles where basically it's shapeless. So you can basically shape it whatever you want on your head. So whatever you're feeling that day, if you want to make it dressy, you just make it curl a different way. If you want more casual, you leave it a little more straight. Like hairstyles like this, I always think of like Barbie or like um, the sisters from the Shangri-Las, the twins, they had those big bouffant bubble cut hairstyles and they look so tough. Oh, I love those girls. Just imagine like sitting in the hallway, chewing bubble gum, and, like calling at boys. All right, she's getting somewhere where I actually really like it. So now we got hairspray it. This side needs a little more work, but that's fine. Hairspray and teasing will bring that together. This side I really like. This one needs a little more work, but we'll get there. Okay. And she's just about done. I just gotta do a little bit of a garnishment to it and try it on my head and see how it looks. And I'll be right back. <laughs> Welcome back. I'm Rita Moreno. <laughs> Welcome back. I'm Beatrice Arthur. Oh my God. This is definitely a hairstyle I did not expect to happen. With the bubble cut, especially if they started hairspraying it with this silver like frosted tip they have on it, it went full mod. There was no direction I can go with this other than and then there's Maude. Oh, God. <laughs> if it goes to a B. Arthur direction, I'm actually not that mad. I have to say, a little thing I would do differently would be, I probably would have curled the back of the wig because the mullet was straightened over time. So it was not the same curl consistency as the rest of the wig. So it would have been a lot easier on me had I just taken some rollers or a curling iron even on very, very low heat and curled the back of this wig like for a few seconds that would make all the difference. But the more you know, the more you learn. I have to say thank you so much to Katrina Klein for submitting this wig. I enjoyed this a lot and it actually gave me an opportunity to teach you folks how to do the bubble cut. It is such, such an easy hairstyle. Oh my God. And how versatile this hairstyle is. I cannot repeat that enough. It is such a versatile hairstyle. And if you want an instant old lady or an instant 1960s, you know, bad girl, it falls between those lines depending on what color you go with. Now I have to say grooming can be an absolute drag, but thankfully I have Manscaped. <laughs> Use my code JAMES20 or Mansfield for 20% off your purchase, plus free shipping. It's for your no-no bits, dear. And I would like to take a moment, a Venmo, where I thank everyone who's tipped me on Venmo. I would like to thank Chris, Anthony, Alluring, Alluring, I love that name, and Ras. Thanks, Ras. Oh my God, thank you all so much for the tips on Venmo. <laughs> and if you want to look as gorgeous as I do, well, Try my code at GerardCosmetics.com. It's James for 30% off your purchase on regular price items. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And until next time, bye. And since you guys voted now that you want me to start keeping the hairstyle surprise on the thumbnail, well, we're gonna do an outro. So hit the outro. <laughs>